Welcome to Prophecy USA Prophecy Podcast, everyone. A podcast specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Karen is not with us today, so we're doing this. Uh, I'm doing this podcast solo. We want to welcome our live chat. Please feel free to press like. It increases our, out, our, our outreach. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It helps us reach more people with the message that we have been given to share to the body of Christ. Folks, America is not irrelevant in the Bible. America plays a pivotal role in Bible prophecy. And tonight's interviews are going to give three biblical perspectives of what in the Word is happening in America. This is part two from last week. But before we begin our interviews tonight, um, we want to let you in on a gift that someone has sent us, some partners uh, in 2023. And uh, it, it's from Vic and Carrie Toonstra. And they've designed a Prophecy USA sticker. Now, this is a window sticker or a bumper sticker. And it comes in two sizes. This is for the bumper. This is for your window. But what uh, Carrie and Vic have done, they've designed this and they put this on the window of their car. And people ask them, what is that? And then they'll tell them to watch Prophecy USA or they'll give them our website to go and look. And they'll explain, well, America's in the Bible. Did you know that? It's a tremendous witnessing tool. And they came up, uh, Carrie and Vic came up with this idea, and they just sent us a pile of these, uh, you know, a couple dozen of them. They had them made themselves at their own expense, and, and Carrie and Vic, we want to thank you for what you've done. It's a beautiful quality sticker, and we, we're about four weeks late in presenting this to you, but we've had so much happen with sickness, et cetera, in our ministry that we just didn't get around to getting this done. But we want to personally thank Carrie and Vic Toonstra for, for going to all this work. It's just a top quality sticker, folks. If you want one, all you can do is just email Karen at Prophecy USA, and we would appreciate a small donation of any, of any amount, if you could, to help us with the expenses because we have to mail them out. But if you want one for your car or for your vehicle, or for your trailer or whatever, um, give us a call, Karen at Prophecy USA, and we'll ship we'll ship these out to you. Ask for either the large one or the small one, small one or the large one, and we'll send that out to you. It's a great witnessing tool, and we so appreciate what they've done because this these are just quality. They're just quality. It's clear. You, all you do is you just peel this off like that and stick it on your window or on your bumper. And it's clear through, so if you've got a yellow car, it'll be yellow in the, in the behind with this Prophecy USA in red and blue. So it's a, it's a really, really nice feature. So um, Carrie and Vic, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Uh, we want to honor you. And uh, they did it all for free, folks, just out of the goodness of their heart. So we, we really appreciate that. Now, folks... We want to thank everyone for your prayers and your comments really mean a lot to us. We're not going to be reading a comment tonight because we're going to go right into this, uh, into this podcast. But one of the things I want to emphasize to all of those listening, for, for all of you that are new, there is something our Prophecy USA program that differs from many prophetic programs that many people may watch. Our viewers tell us, that the thing they like about Prophecy USA is the fact that we use Scripture all the time to back up what we're saying. And this is what I believe differentiates us from many prophetic podcasts that are currently out there. And you know, if, if the Word does not say it, neither will we. Everything that we're teaching is backed by this Word. And God speaks through dreams and visions, etc. But when you start listening to someone or somebody's dream or somebody's vision and it doesn't line up with Scripture, the Bible tells us to run from that person. Jeremiah specifically warned us, in the latter days this will happen. Thus saith the Lord, hearken not unto the words 
of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision from their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imaginations of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word? But the anger of the Lord shall return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. Folks, there's a test that you can give anyone's word, and that's the written word. Now, Jeremiah goes on and says, I have not sent these prophets. What prophets? The prophets of the latter days. Yet they ran. I've not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they'd stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their ways or evil ways from the evil of their doings. Now, this is found in Jeremiah 23, 16 through 22. This word is directly given to us in the latter days, folks. There will be an abundance, according to this, of false prophets. And those prophets will not be warning you of what God is actually saying. Remember, he watches over his word to perform it. Not necessarily every word that comes out of our mouth from our heart, he watches over his word. This is what Prophecy USA is, is trying to track to the best of our ability. Now he goes on in Jeremiah 23 and he says, Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophets that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I'm against the prophets, says the Lord, that use their tongue and say, He saith. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness, yet I've not sent them nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all. This word err, it says, they'll cause my people to err by their lives. That word literally means to lead astray or wander off or be deceived. When it says that they prophesy by lightness, it means they're loose talk, they're reckless talk. And the Bible says um, in Deuteronomy 18, 22, if the word has not come to pass, this is the word the Lord has not spoken. So today, folks, we're going to interview three of our 2023 guests. And I believe these folks are hearing the same thing from heaven that I'm hearing. But most importantly, these folks are using scripture to back everything that they're saying concerning America. And I want to remind you of something very, very serious. Many of the prophets now on the internet, three years ago, were telling you great things were happening, a great revival was coming to turn the tide of the American culture. Some said there would be an outpouring of finances getting ready to be transferred by the wealth of the wicked was going to be what was stored up and, and stored up to give into our hands. Of course, that meant that you would take these finances and you'd become very, very rich so that you could finance the great harvest where the USA would be used by God Almighty to evangelize the world. Folks, these prophecies did not come to pass. They're false. They were given openly for one reason to show you who these folks are. Now, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that's the thing which the Lord has not spoken. We just, we just looked at that, Deuteronomy 18, 22. But the prophet has spoken presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of them. It's, it's, a, it's a word that they want to see come to pass, but God is not our spiritual bellhop. He watches over his word to perform it. Now, when he gives a prophet a word and that prophet speaks it, it will come to pass. But sometimes, like always, we all make mistakes and we're not down putting everybody down that's prophesying because we want to encourage people. God wants to use people in these last days. 
but you have to test that word. 1 John 4, 1 says, Believe not every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they're of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, presumptuously means in the Hebrew, pridefully or overconfident or arrogant. They've spoken arrogantly, thinking that this thing would come to pass, but it didn't come from God's heart. So think of this. When you say the Lord would say, do you know you're actually stating that God is speaking through you? You're actually removing your own opinion from the conversation and standing in the place of God when you say, thus saith the Lord. And did you know that by every word, folks, that we'll be judged by every word that comes out of our mouth? So when you stand and you speak to somebody and you say, thus saith the Lord, and that doesn't come from the Lord, you're going to be judged for speaking that. Matthew 12 says, But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Folks, there's something even more serious than this for those that are speaking it. It's also for you who are listening to voices that are not accurate, and you refuse to test them or discern what is real and what isn't. Once you start following those type of folks, you've left the written word, and you're following an idol. Now, you listen to them prophesy. Now, everybody misses it when they prophesy. A lot of people miss it. But when they're missing it on a continual basis, that's, that's like red warning lights. And this is why it's so incredibly, incredibly important to read and study this Bible. God will speak directly to you folks, but he will never contradict this written word. And this is why we at Prophecy USA have given you 53 biblical descriptions of Babylon the Great. America right now is under judgment. If you cannot see that based on last week's prophecy podcast, then you're missing what the written word actually says. And I do believe we will have a revival of some sorts, but it will be this. It will be a separation between two cultures in America, those who worship Baal and those who refuse to be led by any other word but by the word of God. Now, here's what John has already said to us in North America. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. That word plagues means calamity or misfortune or distresses. Folks, we're entering into plagues right now in America. And iniquities means continuous, unrighteous acts or injustice. God says he will deliver us, deliver us from the calamity and the misfortune, but he has remembered our unrighteous acts and injustice, and it must be judged. So what's the major thing in Babylon that brings her down? The exact thing that creates false prophets, that lures them away from this book, and they follow after something else. Now, Jeremiah said, how long shall this be in the hearts of, of the prophets that prophesy lies? They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Baal means master. In this instance, the prophets are motivated either for money or fame or power or the need to be placed in a position of leadership mastering you. In other words, you wake up in the morning, you hear something on the news and you think, oh, I wonder what prophet so-and-so is saying. I wonder what this prophet is saying. I wonder what that prophet is saying. Why are you following people when you should be following the word? Every week, every day, these folks are hearing from God and telling you what he says. Now, folks, prophets don't operate like that in the New Testament. 
they don't give you daily direction. They only confirm what this book has already said. So if you want to test the prophets, you've got to know this book. God speaks directly to you. And thousands upon thousands of Christians are turning to the internet gods to hear what God is saying. And this is a form of Baal worship. It's off the chart. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. You can hear directly from God. God's voice has been written down in his love letters to the church. So when America meets all 53 biblical descriptions of Babylon the Great, that is God speaking directly to you folks. Matthew 12, 36, But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Justified means vindicated, a right relationship, and condemns means pronounced guilty. So the panel today is based on three individuals who are comparing America today to the Bible. We're looking at our modern culture and the reprobate society that's coming together. Now, Pastor Jax Hibbs believes that the ship has sailed when it comes to modern day teaching of America leading the world in a great revival and coming back to God. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn will tell you what he believes is being repeated in America before Israel fell in the past history and show you the signs of what she did wrong and what we're doing wrong. And then Rabbi Jason Sobel will share what happened before the great exodus took place in Egypt. Folks, we're trying to walk through Scripture the best that we can. So keeping our eyes on this word and also on what's happening, and of course God uses prophets today. There's no doubt about it. But you have to be careful when you jump on the bandwagon and you're going to go prophesy or prophesy you better make sure you're lined up with this book. And folks, the United States of America is in Bible prophecy. Now, I want you to listen to these folks, two Jewish rabbis and a pastor. And, and once we look at these interviews and we hear what they say, we'll come right back. So you are there. This is 2023, three interviews with three great men that we highly admire and we believe in their ministry. Listen to this. The, the enemies of America and Canada are not coming. They're already here. And people who are in office, a lot of them should be in jail. We are not appropriating our laws to those yep. people. But, but my question is, who is controlling those people? Because I, I was in business for 32 years. And when you have oil in your background and you shut it down and yep. you go buy it from your enemies that are chanting death to America, who is controlling the leadership? Now, now you have said, uh, you referenced, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maintain here, I want to just stay... Yeah in the bounds of America for right now. We're not going to go into the next stage, but you have referenced Revelation 18.4, and that verse is, is one that we have used from day one since we started Prophecy USA three and a half years ago. And that verse says, Come out of her, my people, mm -hmm. that ye be not partaker of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Now, how does that apply as we watch this going on? I had a friend of mine who said, I'm so depressed, I can't watch, I can't watch the news anymore. And I said, well, then open up your Bible and read your Bible, because this is proving that, that this book was divinely inspired. And what's happening in our nation is all in this book when you turn away from God, this is what happens. Yes. So when you say, come out of her, my people, when that verse says, how would a person come out of this? How do you, how do you disconnect this from, from this when you see this, when you see this happening? Do you dive into this book? Mm. 
Well, listen, absolutely, yes. I, I just want to say to all of your audience, what Rick just said is 100% true. Uh, if you find yourself, if you are remotely worried or concerned about the world around you, we've got the answer for you. It's the Bible. We're not kidding. Dive into the Bible. If you're not familiar with the Bible, start with, the, with John's gospel and just read through the New Testament. And God is going to speak to you from, from the scriptures, but the Bible's the answer. You need peace. You need calm. In fact, the Bible is the answer. And by no means, you know, Rick, we're talking about uh, this, what's part of our Pocket Power series, the book Countdown. That was the whole point to writing this book, is this book is full of Bible verses to maybe get somebody who's not familiar with the Bible to, to take the Bible seriously. But the point is this, and you hit the nail on the head, that when we reject God, God says, I'm going to remove my hand of blessing from you. You know this. You Exactly. Yeah, you've already mentioned it in Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. He says, I'll remove my hand, and this is what's going to happen. Your crops are going to fail. You're, you're going to have locusts. You're going to have bugs eating your fruit. Your women will miscarry unexplainably. And your enemies will be within your own walls. Rick, in Southern California, it's a bizarre time. Our economy's failing. People are bailing out. California has set a, a, an inter, a, a national record of people leaving the state to survive. But the prices of homes keep going up. Now, you say in your book, persecution is coming. Yep. It's already started. Yes. Your First Amendment rights are already deteriorating, but persecution will not stop Christians from preaching the gospel. And here's something to remember and look for. Persecution always backfires because under the pressure of persecution, salvation sweeps cities counties, states, and even whole nations. So as this as this darkness starts coming, the light inside of us will get brighter and and we may even receive a supernatural anointing in the last days to combat this darkness. Yep. Because you don't have to be a rocket scientist. I have customers who never went to church that are calling me up. And they're saying, what's going on? I mean, even, even people who have never been churched are looking at the news and looking at what's happening in our schools with, with um, the drag queen people yep. and coming in and reading and, and the sexual mutilation. People are going, what in the world exactly. is going on? And I always say, check out what in the word is going on. Good. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right in our nation. Now, can you can you uh, can you just expound a little bit when you say persecution is coming? Yeah, it's coming. Listen, I'm in California right now, and we just uh, we've got a couple of lawsuits that we have filed against the the governor's office and the attorney general's office. Thank God, we just won one of those huge uh, lawsuits about eight weeks ago. Rick, uh, California decided made a, by fiat, by the way, unconstitutionally. Uh, Gavin Newsom and his legislature decided that churches would, from their payroll, from giving, from tithes and offerings, that they would have to give a portion of that money to the state of California to help fund elective abortions. And I said no to that. And I wound up finding a lawsuit against the governor. And uh, beautifully, wonderfully, we just won in the California Supreme Court that fight. That's a form of what I call white collar persecution. But now it's getting elevated. Uh, people are threatening. If I see you somewhere, I'm going to do you in. It, you better not, you better hope I don't meet you in some dark alley somewhere, Pastor. That kind of stuff. Christians are being uh, set up. But here's the thing you said something that I must respond to. It's so good. Daniel never did anything wrong that's recorded in the Bible yet. Daniel was taken away as a teenager from Israel by General Nebuchadnezzar at that time, carried, carried to Babylon. He never saw his homeland again, but that young man went on to be an old man, never compromised, stood firm with God, persecuted, and every time he was persecuted, he was elevated to the point where Daniel became the second mm -hmm. most powerful guy in the Babylonian Empire and was a counselor 
to various kings. Point being this, every time the church is persecuted, those who truly are the church wind up changing history. Think, I was recently speaking at Oxford, yes. and I wound up uh, standing by the Martyrs Memorial, where you're, you're standing there, and, and men like Wycliffe uh, and others who stood for the word of God were violently persecuted to death. And what happened? What happened from their blood grew a great revival that swept revival. from Europe. Exactly. So even though California is going so, so very dark, as is the United States, there are beautiful pockets of fire bursting open of revival. And one of it is in Southern California. Listen, you mentioned in the introduction 10,000 people. What you don't know is that we not too long ago baptized 3,000 people in the Pacific Ocean who made decisions for Christ. We are going to be holding a service on September 8th in an arena in Anaheim that seats 17,500 people. What does this mean? It wow. means people are looking around. They're scared. They're nervous. All this stuff about UFO sightings, all this stuff about violence, all this stuff about government you know, encroachment upon your life. People are scared. They're looking for answers. There's only one answer, and I love it. It never changes. It's the Word of God. It's the Bible. It's never failed us, and it's never going to fail us. And you can trust the Lord. He will see you all the way through. Okay, now there's there's something that you said in the book that I want you to emphasize to our listeners. One of the keys that you give in the book to unlocking the mystery is called the house of spirits. What is that? And what does it warn us of, Rabbi? Uh, this is the, the warning that comes from Jesus himself. And that is, and, and, and most believers have heard of this parable, but they don't realize the implications. And that is, he said, when a spirit comes out of a man, looks for a, it looks for a place to dwell, doesn't find it, says, I'm going to go back to my house. And they saw him at the man. He goes back, finds the house or the man swept, empty, clean, goes out, gets seven other spirits more evil than itself. They repossess the house. They take over and they repossess the man. And the, and the Lord says the, latter, the last state is worse than the first state, the repossession. Yes. Now, believers hear this. They say, well, it's talking about a man. Well, yes, but it's talking about more than a man because it says it goes on in Matthew. He says, so it shall be with this generation, generation. Not, not just a man, an entire culture. As we said, you know, cultures, civilizations can be possessed, they can be delivered, and they can be repossessed. And so here now is the warning to us, now, more to our time than any other, to us, to America, to Canada, to the West, and it is this, any civilization any nation, any culture that has been delivered of these things, these spirits, if it should ever turn away from God, if it should ever turn away from that which cast out those spirits, if it should ever become empty of God or the gospel, the word, the presence of God, then it will be an it will be the house of spirits. The, the spirits that were cast out of it will come back into it. The spirits translated, the spirits that were cast out of Western civilization at the beginning of the age will come back to America, will come back to Canada, will come back to the West to repossess it. And see, that's why, Rick, you know, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing for any nation exactly. that has known the gospel to turn away from the gospel, turn away from God. Dangerous. It's not just bad, it's dangerous. Look at what happened to Russia. Here's a, you know, when they turned away from the, the Christianity. What happened was communism, but it wasn't, it was not neutral or secular, it was demonic. Millions of people were killed. What happened when the land of the Reformation, the word Germany, turned away from Christianity? What happened? Hitler happened. It was not secular, it was demonic. And so what it's saying here, now it's happening to America, Canada, it's happening to the West. So what it's saying is a dangerous thing because the warning is the house will not remain empty. If you take God out, you empty yourself of God, something else is coming in. 
And what is coming in is dark and demonic, and that is what is, is happening right now. And if you want to understand what's been happening to the West, America chiefly, and then all the other nations, what has been happening for a, a little over a century, half a century, is that it has been the the it has been the removal of God and a process of repossession. And actually, it's pay, it's a repaganization. That is what's underlying everything from from you know what's happening with sexuality, what's happening with wokeness, what's happening to our children, what's happening to marriage. Everything goes to this mystery. Okay, now that that pretty well brings us to chapter eight in the book, and clarify this if I'm right or wrong. When America or North America kicks out God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you mentioned three distinct entities that will replace them, and you call them the Dark Trinity. And you've literally named them called the Possessor, the Enchantress, and the Destroyer. First of all, who is the Possessor? Yeah, well, this is the basis is this, you know, can we actually identify? The spirits. That is not saying there's only there's only a few, but there were when Israel turned away from God, there were three main principalities that that typify its fall from God and its in a sense its repossession. It ended up destroying Israel. Israel was destroyed after that. But the thing is that there were three, and so the first is called in, in the Return of the Gods is called the possessor. That's what his name means. His name actually in in ancient Hebrew means the the owner, the master. Um, it means it, you know, it, it actually, actually, it is. Um, it also means the Lord, and so you know, in Hebrew, you say it, you say his name Baal, Baal, and we call him Baal, but it means the possessor. And so what happened was, this was the spirit of the principality that that when he, he got a foothold with Israel, they just began to turn from God, got in, and began turning Israel from a nation that knew God to into a pagan nation. This is the principality that's coming to America, coming to the West, and is now the, the mission is to turn a Judeo-Christian civilization into a pagan one. And the thing is, and remember something too, that when you know Jesus said when they come back, they come back worse. So what's coming is worse than even paganism. But this is what's happened. So when can we identify this got entrance, this spirit, you know, became, uh, was found an, an entryway to get in. Well, in the early, in America, the early 1960s is a very uh, important critical mark. That's when it began, the culture began to remove God. First took God out of the school, of prayer out of school, then the word out of the school. That's all you need. You know, back then they said, well, you know, it's not a big deal. They might say, well, it's not a, well, it's a gigantic deal because when you start taking God away from the children, you're taking God away from the future of the nation. And so look and look at what, Je look at the warning, look at this mystery that Jesus said the house is not going to remain empty. So if you take God out, we took God out of the school, God from our children, look what has now come into the schools. Look what has now come into our children. So, so it leaves a vacuum, in other words. Yeah, it opens the it, door. And that's exactly what happened with Israel. It's exactly what's happening now. So what does this spirit that comes in to say early 60s in force, what does it do? The Bible says that Baal sought to drive God out of everything, drive him out of the public square, out of government, out of and out of media, out of everything. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. That that we have watched this spirit from the early 60s now that to this day, where God is progressively driven out. That's what the spirits do. Number two, it says that that Baal caused Israel to forget God. Well, what this is what's happened as well to America, to Canada, to the West, that is actually causing a nation that wants to God or a civilization that wants to God to actually forget God and forget that it ever knew God. You know, it's you know, there was once in America, and I'm sure in Canada, where actually the public school teachers led the children in the Lord's Prayer in the 1950s, exactly. you know, where the top yes. movies had names like the Ten Commandments and King of Kings, you know, and and look at where we have gone. We can't even remember that. And and you know and and that America or that Canada could not even could not even fathom the one that the America or Canada that is now. So we have that. Also, it says that the spirit of Baal or Baal caused Israel to 
turn away from the ways of God, literally. And well, that's, we've been watching that progressively, but also we have literally, this spirit has literally caused us in America to strike down the Ten Commandments, literally. So this is a spirit that actually paganizes the culture and in ways, Rick, that, that we may not even realize. Let me give you an example. In, in you know, when you have a monotheistic uh, civilization, one God, you got one truth. And that's the way it's always been, one God, one truth. But in paganism, you don't have, you have many gods and many truths. And so therefore, now we have this new thing in our culture, wokeness, which is basically, which one of the things it says is that you have, everybody has their own truth. If a man says he's a tree, well, then that's his authentic truth. If a woman says exactly. she's a cat, that's her authentic truth. But of course, it's not true. And so this has affected everything. And another thing about what paganism did, you know, they say, oh, this is, this is enlightened. No, it's paganism. Uh, you know, paganism bl uh, blurred the line between image and reality. You know, the idol was actually the god. So now we are blurring the line between reality and basically virtual and reality. We have, we have live in a virtual world where the work, you know, we have created another reality. Another thing about the pagan paganism is it blurred the line between at man and animal. You, you look at those, those images of those gods, they're half man, half animal. Well, we're blurring that in every in every possible way. It's it's not in clay, but we're actually splicing the genes together of man and animal. So in every way, yes. we have been paying us. And I'll, I'll just give you one more sign of Baal, and then we I mean, go to the, the next of it. But that is that, that, you know, there was one sign of Baal above all other signs. And you know what that was? That was a, a molten bronze bull all over the Middle East. Could that actually reappear in the modern world? It has. Go to go to America. Go to New York City. Go to the the South, the bottom part where where the harbingers are, and you'll find another harbinger. You'll find a gigantic, massive bronze bull, which the people who did it had no idea what they were doing. It is the sign, the biblical sign of Baal, of a nation that has given itself to the gods, turned away from God, and given itself to gods. It's right there. So, folks, this uh, this rabbi is sent. Mm -hmm. um, with a word that is just unbelievable. You've said, Rabbi, uh, in your book, the Egyptians enslaved the children of Israel on physical, spiritual, and emotional levels. God designed the plagues to bring freedom on these three levels. The exodus from Egypt involved on a national and personal level, turning darkness into light. And the Israelites had light in their dwelling. So from a, from a Jewish mindset, Rabbi, how does the Egyptian bondage over 3,000 years ago apply to what believers are experiencing today? It's a great question. I mean, here, I think first of all we have to understand is that Egypt is not just a physical place. It is actually a state of being right mm -hmm. so, so egypt in hebrew is mitzrayim mitzrayim comes from the hebrew word sar which means a place of confinement or restriction on a spiritual level on a biblical principle level right egypt is representative of a place of confinement and restriction that wants to enslave us exile us and rob us of life and destiny in God and in Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. It's the place that wants to box us in and break us down so that we can't fulfill the calling and destiny that God has for us, right? And there is that general pr principle that everything that was written in the scriptures, yes, it happened to the children of Israel, but it's written for us right? For us yes. to learn something from, there's, it, the Bible is not just a history book, right? It's living and active, and therefore has application in every season and in every generation, right? So specifically yes. in the context of what you mentioned, we're talking about the last three plagues upon Egypt, right? Which were the three worst plagues. So the eighth plague, was the plague of locusts, right? And locusts on a spiritual level represent a perverted mind and a corrupt way of thinking. 
So locusts eat vegetation. Vegetation, when you think about the flowers and the grass and the trees, you think green, right? In the Bible, God's word is associated with green because in Jewish tradition, um, when God comes down on Mount Sinai, the desert literally blooms and turns green. And so the Torah scripture is associated with greenery. Why? Because truth renews and transforms our minds. The locust eating the vegetation is symbolic of a corrupted way of thinking. And it reminds us of the battle for truth that the enemy wants to come. The forces of darkness want to come and eat the truth where you show us the light. truth. Dark, well, dark the versus truth. light. Exactly. Dark versus light because darkness. So truth is associated with light, the light of God's word, right? So darkness is an absence of truth. It's an absence of having the light. So it's a lie. It's a lie. Dark, right. The, 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 king, the enemy's kingdom is a kingdom of lies. It's a kingdom of darkness. Exactly. But then the, but then the ninth plague is literally darkness. And darkness That's is right. associated with depression and sadness. So the Egyptians sat in darkness. And the Bible tells us it was a heavy darkness. Why it was a physical, there was a physical aspect of the darkness. It wasn't just that there was no light, it literally immobilized the Egyptians. It's what it says in the Hebrew, right? So, why? Because the Egyptians physically enslaved the Israelites. So they were confined in darkness because they were meant to physically and psychologically experience the fear and terror that the children of Israel had gone through as slaves. Also, depression is associated with darkness in Jewish exactly. thought. It's associated association of isolation. So what do we see? We see a loss of truth in the Western world, okay? A battle for truth, fake news in our media, right? And a, 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 an attack on scriptures, attack on biblical truth, morality, principles, all of that. Darkness also represents loneliness sadness isolation depression look at the rate look at the look how there's a skyrocketing of loneliness and depression and psychological Hopeless. hopelessness right? yes theological seminaries have inundated churches preaching that america is not in the bible prophecy teachers have regurgitated for years that america is not in the bible but what does the bible say Prophecy USA is proud to present a 30-page brochure filled with scripture debunking the biggest lie keeping the body of Christ in darkness today. America is fully detailed in scripture over 53 times, and now we want to put God's word directly into your hands. America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled and her judgment is coming. For a gift of $15 plus shipping and handling, we will send you this amazing brochure. For a gift of $50, we will send you five brochures. For $100 or more, we will rush to you 10 brochures. And for a ministry gift of $500, we will send you both our books, The Hour That Changes Everything, and The Coming Exodus, plus 20 brochures for your friends, family, and relatives. Call today. Folks, we hope you enjoyed part two of our 2023 reviews with Pastor Jack Hibbs, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, and Jason Sobel. We're so honored to have these folks do interviews with us, but unfortunately, we're out of time. We will continue on next week with part three as Prophecy USA seeks truth in this book. No hype, no drama. We just want to know what in the word is happening in America. This is Prophecy USA. My name's Rick Pearson. I'm reminding you that God's in control Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom.